welcome design made. I'll invite you in to show you the store. So yeah, this is a store we've had for I guess five years now. I used to sell through a gallery in Chelsea and there was a point where I felt like I wanted to sort of stretch my wings and do my own thing. The shop in Brooklyn was always manufacturing its machinery and much more about the making of stuff. Where this was much more about you know pre presenting what it is we develop a finer or polished version of the public facing aspect of the business. In this studio we have our gallery. I have a changing shows. How many people there are in the studio? We're about 16 total. Pretty much half and half. Eight people here. Eight people in Brooklyn. Yeah. It's, it's a fun crew and it's a good scale. You know, getting any bigger I think would be really daunting. Tell me about your current work. What do you do? Well, we have a new collection coming out in January. That's um, it's taken a good year to sort of sort out. How big are the collections uh, usually? It's sort of modifying. Initially, we do everything. We do a chandelier, three versions, standing lamp, desk lamp, and try to hit all the categories. We have a different show probably four times a year. You know, that we'll launch a collection or we'll have an exhibit with a painter or an artist of some type. We had this beautiful show, artist Melissa McGill, not that long ago. And then there's shows like this, which is sort of a bit of a different thing for us. It was a Cubot, which is one of our designs. Not quite 10th year anniversary, but almost. And there was a project in Chicago where they made these enormous 20-foot tall ones. They're really pretty spectacular pictures. There's a drawing here of the history. Let's just make it as simple as possible. This show is sort of the, the evolution of this whole thing, the whole process. It also is the evolution of the culture that goes on, energize the process and the project. Like this was a pitch to Michael Diamond for the Beastie Boys, trying to get them interested in like using them for a video. Um, this is a woman DJ. She's challenged, physically challenged. I was fascinated with Cuba and Drew him every day. So she and I would used to get together for once a week for a little while and to draw together. This is like a really random early model. And these are these letters from parents and from kids. They're very funny. Thank you for inventing the Cubot. And they're just really sweet. What was the biggest project that you've ever created with the Cubot? Well, this one that we just did, we made an architectural version. Yeah. In Chicago, they built two of them. His legs start like higher than your head and he's twice as high as this room. Wow. That's a public walkway that he's holding. What kind of location is that? It's a Marriott, oh. a big hotel. You're going to stay there for a long time, like forever. Forever. It was really amazing to get out of the taxi cab and be like, oh my god, I had no idea. I mean, you hear 23 feet and you're like, yeah, whatever. That sounds like a tall. But when you actually are faced with it, it's really, it's pretty crazy. How would you describe the relationship uh, of Americans and, well, their furniture and objects that they buy? That has evolved a lot over the last 10 or 20 years. You know, Ikea, or, you know, that was the most modern thing that existed. And it, yeah, I mean, that was used to be, like, it used to be kind of progressive to go shopping at Ikea. But then, you know, at least in New York, it's evolved a great deal. And now it's much more sort of compelling and interesting work. I think the U.S. had to go through the process where they had to digest the European brands. Because when I started, there was no one even went to Milan. Like yeah. nobody sort of were interested in anything outside the U.S. But now I think the U.S. is on its own kind of trajectory. It feels like it's very much its own style. It's hard to describe what that is, but it's. I think it's a little oversized. It's a little. It's not delicate, you know. It is to a degree, but it's also very much about the mass of it and the sort of solid quality. Which I, I like that. I mean, that feels very American as a principle. Yeah. You know, American cars historically have always been big, heavy things, not super light, high tech. So I think that's still pervasive and exists in the U.S. Now, I mean, almost all American designers show in Milan, and they make the effort to be there every year. Not to support so much, but the companies in Europe, they pick designers to work with. They use, they promote their name in the process. Yeah. In the U.S., if you design for somebody else, it only recently has become a thing to where you'll be promoted along with the product. Mm -hmm. Invariably, it's like the company gets all the credit, and maybe you get a little fine print mm -hmm. and a small percentage of the wholesale cost. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll see where it goes. Mm -hmm.